In this Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Loft tool. The Loft tool is really great for transitioning one form into another. Often these are sketch planes. For example, here I have a circle on a base and then up in the air I have a square. How can I connect these two pieces? If I go to Create Loft, Fusion tells us that we need to select some profiles. So I'll select this profile first, then I'll select this profile. And as you can see, Fusion lofts in between them. Now I don't have to just pick this, I have some options. So if you look under the menu here, I can choose connected, which kind of averages out the transition, but then I can also give these a direction. And this offers up new variables such as takeoff weight and takeoff angle. So if I change the takeoff weight, you can see how it is influencing the shape. As I raise it up, one shape more than the other has influence. I can also change the takeoff angle, and this will change the way the shapes interact with each other. So this can be really great for making unique forms because so far, all I've drawn is a circle and a square, and now I have this really neat form that I can select OK, and then I can go to the top, and I can modify shell, and I can shell this out, and now I have a great vase. Let's look at another example. So here I have some sketch entities, as you can see next to my vase here. So I have a base and a top. Let's go ahead and loft these to see what happens. So once again, to loft, we go create, loft, then I'll select this profile and this profile. And when it does that, it makes an interesting shape, but it's not too interesting. If you look under guide type under loft in Fusion 360, you can use centerline guide type or rails. Rails is the default. So if I select rails, now I can select rails by clicking this arrow. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and select this rail. Now you can see that the form is pulled over to the rail. But I have this other rail. You can add multiple rails. And if I click this one, notice that the form pulls in. So you can use the rails to dictate the shape. And what's nice is you can go back in and edit these depending on what you want. So I can either have this one, or not, and I can change those. And I can still change the direction of these so I can change their weights of influence as I see fit. Excellent, so that's how you use rails with the loft tool in Fusion 360. Let's look at how you can use centerline. So once again, I have some sketch profiles here. And if you look at this, I have a triangle shape here, and then I have a circle. Let's go ahead and loft this to see what happens. So I go create, loft, and I select this profile right here. Then I select this profile. And if I orbit around in Fusion 360, you can see that it just took the shortest path. Of course, I could change the direction of this to have some influence. As you can see here, I get a little bit of influence, but it still doesn't change exactly what I want. So I'm gonna go back to connected. And then what I can do is change the center line, and then I can pick this center line. And as you can see, it starts to make this smooth transition from one point to the next, following my center line. What makes this great is because Fusion 360 is a parametric modeling program, I can come back and edit this center line to match the form that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and press OK. So those are three interesting forms we've created with Loft. Let's look at one more example that might come up in your 3D modeling in Fusion 360. So here I have two circles. And if I go ahead and create loft and I select the bottom circle and then this smaller circle, I get a pretty cool cone. But what if I wanted to make a point uh, at the end of a tip or like a horn that had a curve to it? Even if I make that circle smaller, it's not gonna become a point. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete profile two. And instead of selecting the outside, I'll select the inside. And as you can see, now I get a point instead of a circle. And I have some choices, just like I can go connected or direction. On the profile is a point, I can go sharp or a tangent. You see how this rounds it out and I can change how round that gets. So you can see I can make it very bulbous, I can make it semi-bulbous. So this is a really great feature for using the loft. So hopefully you can use the loft in your Fusion 360 designs and create all kinds of interesting forms. There's a lot more to loft and combining more shapes, but this is a great guide to get you started with the basics of lofting in Fusion 360. Happy 3D modeling.